Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. It is 2.07 a.m. in Iowa time. And uh, Biden tries to break the law. GOP says not so fast. Republicans move to block Biden's administration immigration loophole. The ranking Republicans on the House and Senate judi Judiciary Committees last week sent a letter to the DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas demanding more information on the recently announced program that would permit tens of thousands of Venezuelans nationals to enter the United States using humanitarian parole. Congre Congressman Jim Jordan and Senator Chuck Grassley called Homeland Securities nearly created a categorical parole program. Not only another misguided immigration policy, but also a flagrant violation of immigration law. DHS announced the parole program as part of the new agreement with Mexico. It provides a legal pathway for Venezuelans nationals to enter the United States. DHS said the program, which is capped at 24,000, would require Venezuelans to have a supporter in the U.S. to provide support. The Venezuelans would have to pass biometric and other security screenings and complete public health requirements, including vaccinations. Similar program was introduced earlier this year for Ukrainian refugees. Secretary Mayorkas said in a statement that the program will ensure a lawful and orderly way for Venezuelans to enter the United States. Jordan and Grassley, however, argue that the program ignores the intent of Congress and deports from how past administrations have exercised case-by-case exercised -case parole authority while doing nothing to secure the border or prevent the unprecedented, unprecedented <laughs> here we go again, I've been reading a lot, <laughs> unprecedented said, a surge of aliens across the southern border, unprecedented. Uh, the Immigration of Nationality Act states that parole can only be used on a case-by-case -case basis for urgent humanitarian reasons or significant public benefit. However, the act has been used to parole massive numbers of so-called migrants across the southern border and in special cases like Afghan refugees after the U.S. withdrawal and the entry of Ukrainian refugees after the Russian invasion. In their letter, the lawmakers argue that contrary to Mayorkas assertion, the Secretary of DHS can't legally create a pathway for anyone to enter the United States, adding that it is another example of how the Biden administration displays contempt for enforcing federal immigration law as set by Congress. Aren't there other countries that could share in this what do I want to call this? Immigration Act? Why is it just us? We're being pushed out of our own country. I suppose we've asked for too much. You know? The workers asked for higher wages. Stores have asked for higher prices on their products. Biden's undermined what we all stand for, hasn't he? I don't understand how this is all coming about. Just since Biden got in office, who's pushing him? Why are they trying to break us and push us out of our own country? That's my thoughts. Just my thoughts. But doesn't it seem like that to you? And what have we asked of our country? To give our workers, the mothers that have to leave their children at home, 
or with a babysitter or preschools, whatever. And what do you call them other things? Preschools? He's a preschooler and and uh, these homes that take in uh, mother's uh, children while they're at work. I can't even think that. I must be getting tired. I've read so much. But it just seems so negative for us. You know, I made a statement one time in, in uh, maybe more than one video, I suppose. The worst is yet to come. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Well, I have another one here that uh, I found kind of interesting. And I've also said, you know what? I'm kind of glad I'm the age I am. Not really. But how else am I supposed to feel? Watching our country being crushed. Actually being crushed by Biden letting in everybody from all over and not tending to the people that made this United States of America. Am I wrong? I don't know. I could be. I'm hardly ever right, you know, and I'll admit it. Just trying to understand stuff. That's all I'm doing. Well, this one here, uh, I don't know, but it's Elon Musk appears in an odd video. Elon Musk appears in an odd internet video. Uh, Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk addressed a business conference on the sidelines of the G20 summit in Indonesia via video conference on Monday. When asked about his recent equi equation acquisition, I guess, of Twitter, Musk said he'd been working from morning till night, seven days a week. Wearing the traditional Batik shirt, B-A-T-I-K, Batik shirt, sent by G20 organizers, Musk appeared on screen lit by only candles, explaining that he was speaking from a place that had just lost power. You're going to hear the kids playing in the background here. That's their playtime. Uh, when asked about the many business leaders in Asia who say they want to be the Elon Musk of the East, the billionaire CEO said they should be careful what they wish for. He said he doubted many people actually want to be like him. Musk also said he would like to see Twitter support more video, long-form video content so creators could earn a living on the platform. Indonesia has been trying to secure a deal with Telsa, Tesla, on battery investment and possibly a deal for SpaceX to develop a rocket launch site. While Musk did not commit to either of those during his appearance at the G20, he did say that the Indonesia has a large role to play in the electric vehicle supply chain. He also said that in the long term, it would make sense for SpaceX to have multiple launch points across the globe. Okay. I don't know what you're thinking. But I know what I'm thinking. At one point during his talk, Musk remarked on his video image calling it so bizarre and adding, I'm sitting here in the dark, surrounded by candles. So is, is there something we need to read between the lines there? Because we've already been warned that that's probably going to happen to us. If Biden has his way in the next two years, I'm scared to death of the next two years. I can't express that enough. I just can't. Musk also made his regular pitch for the global economy to make the transition to sustainable energy. 
adding that it was just a question of how long it takes. Additionally, Musk made the case for continued space exploration, saying it should remain a priority so we can understand the nature of the universe and our place in it. He suggested that it might be possible to find an alien civilization or to discover the ruins of an ancient civilization that existed millions of years ago. I think that would be incredibly interesting, Musk added. Well, it probably would be. You know, because you, you read all these articles and say, well, you know, the earth is just so many years old and it's coming to an end. And, and you get right down to the basics of the facts, of the truth. This world is, has been here for years, millions and trillions of years. Maybe not trillions, but millions, you know. And do we really understand why are we the only operable planet? You know, you can let your mind just go way far out if you want to carry it that far. I'm not sure I do. But the facts would be interesting, the truth, but I want the truth. Like I said before, the truth sets you free. But I saw something else on Musk um, to where he's really into this space development preparing a place for us to go he must have an uh, incredible high IQ Trump does his is out, outlandish so smart I wish I just had half of the smarts that these high IQers have. You know, geniuses. Wouldn't that be amazing? Then maybe we could understand what's going on. But we got two years. Look at the damage that was done the last two years. Well, let's see if I can find another small one here. Uh, I've got them lined up pretty good, but I'm just about ready uh, to say goodnight. But I will do one more here. Uh, i still got a few minutes. I've got myself time so I don't go over so long. But uh, let's try this one here. Texas DA opens election investigation. Oh dear, hold off, wait, wait, don't go nowhere. I've already did this one. I didn't move it. I should have moved it, so I don't repeat it. Uh, let's see, let's move that over there. And that over there. I must have put another picture then. Okay, let's try this one here, because I know I haven't done this one. Like I said, I've got a desktop full again. I've been working. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what this one is because I really didn't go over it. Uh, Camilla Harris receives another busload of migraines from Texas governor. Uh, now this says this was two days ago. Um, but I didn't do this one and I've had this loaded. Uh, or just on my desktop for, oh, what, about three days ago, and I never got to it. Oh, that boo-boo. Oh, he's my kitty, and I'll tell you what now, he's just a little over a year old, and he is something else. <laughs> he's just something else. Uh, someone said he should be president. They sent me a message and said, he should be president. I said, yeah, he wants everything his way. <laughs> Texas Governor Greg Abbott dropped off more 
migrates outside the U.S. Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C., where Vice President Kamala Harris is staying. More than 40 individuals arrived. Now, there was another video earlier, about a month and a half ago, that was the same thing. And it shows pictures of them. My goodness, backpacks covered in blankets trying to stay warm. And there's videos. The buses carrying immigrants arrived at Kamala's home, Washington, D.C., according to Abbott. All of the migrants had signed up for the trip. According to report by Fox 5, the governor of Texas dropped off several buses full of migrants, migrants outside the U.S. Naval Observatory, observatory, <laughs> observatory, whatever, in September, in October. He sent another batch of buses before they reached Texas. So in October, so November, we've not uh, seen any, any other buses loaded coming in. State that the migrants came from various countries, such as Cuba, Nigeria, Nicaragua. Yeah, it's N-I-C-A-R-A-G-U-A. -A Nicaragua. Wagua. I can't pronounce that. Nicaragua. Well, I haven't looked at anything about that forever since school <laughs> and Colombia since April the state has been busing over 8,400 migrants to the capital of the country Nicaragua yeah Nicaragua while Abbott is currently transporting 10,000 migrants to Washington DC <coughs> excuse me he has also sent thousands to other areas such as Chicago New York City for instance, he sent over 4,000 individuals to New York City while sending around 1,200 to Chicago. In response of the growing numbers of migrants, the governor of Texas said that he would expand the state's busing operation to Philadelphia. He noted that the strategy has helped alleviate the situation in border communities. The state of Texas will continue to do whatever it takes to protect the American people and prevent an invasion at the border until the Biden administration fulfills its promise of securing the border. Yeah, there's another point. He said he's going to secure the border. When? When? I haven't heard a speech from him lately about the border. I've heard a speech about him letting in more immigrants uh, don't jump on crystal he likes to jump over crystal she's a little yorkie and he just loves jumping over sometimes he misses and hits her back now settle down oh i have a little pet whoops i have a little uh pet thing here i call a gun and it's a dog barker controller well, where am I? There I am. <laughs> Look at the cam, Betty. Okay, hello. <laughs> and uh, it's a handy little thing. And when I get this, he knows he better lay down. He knows he better settle down. It's got a flashlight on it. See? Got a flashlight. But the buzzer on it, and I can't hear it. It's not uh, for the human ears. But they can hear it, and they know that when I get the gun, and I call it a gun, when I get the gun, they know we better settle down because Mama getting mad. Yeah, <laughs> they know. <laughs> In addition uh, to being an ideal drop-off location, Abbott noted that Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney has been fighting for the city's sanctuary status. This made it an ideal choice for Texas. In response, the mayor of Philadelphia tried to maintain the diversity in our strength, positioning that Democrats have been pushing for. The mayor of Philadelphia said that the city would welcome the individuals with dignity and respect. He also thanked the community and the government for their support. The mayor noted that the city's diversity was its strength, and it was possible for the local communities and government to work together to address the needs of the newcomers. I got something to say about that too, but 
God love the people that are trying to escape wherever they're coming from. That they don't uh, accept the way that they live, you know. But if they only knew what we've been through the last two years and two more years to face, they probably wouldn't want to come to the United States. That's my thought. Nobody else's but my thought. Despite the mayor's positive statements about the city's diversity, one individual noted that the average Philadelphian would rather not see more illegal immigrants in the area. It just keeps going on and on. Two more years. What are we going to do? We can't do anything. Can't do nothing. I just don't know. Well, I believe I'm going to get back to work for at least probably another hour, getting stuff lined up for tomorrow, or today, I should say now. And uh, I'm going to wish you all uh, good night, and um, I'll see you all tomorrow. God bless, and give someone else a blessing. So long. I'll be back.